and it is all brought to you by our friends at Greta Bar YVR. March 10th is Mario Day. Get it? Mar 10, right? It spells out Mario. At all Greta locations, Edmonton, Calgary, and Vancouver. Dive into the ultimate Mario Day celebration with our thrilling tournament on March 10th. Get ready to put your gaming skills to the test in a single elimination showdown for the chance to win a grand prize of $1,000 cash. Whether you're a seasoned Mario expert or just love a good challenge, this event is perfect for gamers of all levels. Join us at Greta Bar YVR for an action-packed afternoon filled with nostalgia, competition, and plenty of fun. Secure your spot in the tournament by purchasing tickets online for just $20 or grab yours at the door for $25. Plus, enjoy our special $5.50 Regretta pricing on drinks all day long, adding an extra level of enjoyment to your gaming experience. Tickets include house beer, Greta Burger, and entry into the tournament with a game card. The tournament starts at 4 p.m. sharp, so make sure you head on down to Greta Bar YVR. Thanks for not calling it Mario, by the way. Sakaris called him Mario today. People who call him Mario, come on. It's so off putting. I know so many people that do that too. Well, because they're thinking of a a different location that we don't have. It's a me, a Mario. Yeah. yeah. He doesn't say it's a me, Mario. Anyways, (laughs) let's get to Frank Cervelli. Frank, you a big Mario Kart guy? Yeah, but I shamefully call him Mario. Why? 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 Mario Lemieux. He's not Mario. No, he he is Mario Lemieux. I think he's Mario Lemieux. No, I think it's mispronounced. No, the na- that is not a real name. No. Nope. Anyways. Green jacket, gold jacket. Who gives a shit? <laughs> hey, Frank. Aren't you of Italian descent, Frank? Do you know any Marios? I'm actually in the process of getting my Italian passport, believe it or not. So well, he can say what he wants. I hope quads. they don't ask you to Do pronounce you that name. I hope they don't ask you to pronounce that name on the citizenship test. Or not citizenship test. You know what I'm saying. Okay, Frank, we got busy stuff. <laughs> we're, we're busy today. We got a lot of stuff to get to. Uh, trade deadline has arrived a little bit early here. Uh, what are you hearing? Obviously, we've got your new trade targets board. Uh, Pavel Buchnevich, a lot of different names on your trade targets board. What are you hearing right now? Yeah, I think that's kind of the fun part about a day like today with a ton of bullets flying. You try and figure out what's next. And, you know, certainly the Pavel Buchnevich situation is fascinating to me. I just think there's a lot of reticence in the market in general to spend big on players who are rentals. And look, we see it every year where teams dive in and pay the price. And then when they don't win because only one is left standing, inevitably they feel a ton of buyer's remorse. And That's where I think Buchnevich is so fascinating. The Blues are in an ultimate position of power. They've got the premier non-rental forward available on the market, with all due respect to Riley Smith. A point-per-game player over these last three seasons and someone that I think when push comes to shove, the Blues know are not going to be extending beyond this current contract and paying $8 bucks a year. They don't have to move him now, but I'm told that they're asking for three essentially first round pick equivalents Mm. in order to make this Buchnevich deal happen at a retained number, which sounds like a lot, but he could really be one of those players that not just helps put you over the top this year, but then is re-signed next year at 2.9 million bucks. I mean, that's a really attractive price. Yeah, certainly a name that I'd thought of a while ago and you look at names around that might interest the Canucks. Um, I'm not sure there is a fit given that price, given everything we know the Canucks have, but, but that makes sense to me. Um, we were, we were talking about the blues before you just came on and I was thinking about in reference to the Kings, actually looking at their goalie situation. Do you think there's any chance Jordan Bennington's going anywhere? I don't, um, as well as he's played this year, I think still that contract is a pretty difficult one to move Patty. So I, I don't, but I did add um, Linus Olmark at the right. very end of my trade target <laughs> board. He's number 49. I think it's a real long shot, which is why he's indicated that low on the board. I think you have to at least allow for the, for the possibility of it, though, because there has been so much talk. I know the New Jersey Devils are one of the teams that's inquired. And really the situation with Boston is they just don't have very many assets. And if you are a team that, is trying to create value for someone to trade. Allmark is one way to do it. Now, I, I think, again, long shot because 
they've had the best tandem in the league and it's a big reason why they've been able to buoy this season based off of where they were last year, despite the pieces they lost. The goaltending is the common thread there, and they've been consistently excellent. And when you have two guys in Olmark and Swayman that get along as well as they do, I mean, to me, I'd be looking at that situation and trying to hang on to it for as long as I can. But Swayman is also due a new contract for next season and I believe discussions are well underway. They may not be able to afford everyone. It's just, would you like to do it now? Or would you potentially like to address this in the summer? Uh, Frank, I heard Sidney Crosby's not coming to Vancouver. Did you, <laughs> did I read it correctly that you reported they're going to sign an extension as soon as possible? I think that's the I intention. Um, I wouldn't report that as fact. I would say that, that's certainly been the talk behind the scenes is that Crosby wants to end his career as a penguin. He's said and done all the right things. I mean, honestly, what else would he say? But I do think that both franchise and franchise centerpiece and one of the NHL's Mount Rushmore players probably of all time is on track to do that this summer. So there's still a chance is all I heard there. <laughs> That's all I heard. Uh, Frank, with the Canucks and the trade deadline approaching on Friday, we've heard names. We've heard Tyler Toffoli. We've heard Jake Gensel. We've heard Elias Lindholm to Boston, all these other rumors. Uh, what do you expect from the Canucks in the days leading up to the deadline here? I don't know. I'm just being abundantly obvious, and I think it's okay to say that sometimes. Um, I think they've really kept tabs on the Gensel situation. The latest that I've heard is that Pittsburgh seems to be pretty confident that they can extract a significant return. Uh, that's from one of the teams that has made a real pitch from Gensel that doesn't think they're going to get him. Now, I don't know where that is, what it ends up looking like. Is it Vancouver? I've always thought since the Lindholm trade, my way, the way I'm reading the Canucks is, is such that they made a, a significant acquisition. They want to do more. They don't really want to dip into their prospect pool of the sort of top, you know, A-level guys that are on the way. Lakara Mackey, um, Will Ander. I would probably include the other Pedersen in there as well. Pretty close. Um, they don't want to move those guys. And I've I've sort of always viewed it as they're going to continue to tinker around the edges, but it also is in Jim Rutherford's playbook that if something hasn't worked, cut bait. That said, my evaluation of the situation relative to Lindholm is, I don't know how much Lindholm has struggled and how much just the team has really hit their first speed bump of the season coinciding with his arrival. That part is tough to suss out. And I wouldn't handicap one way or the other what happens next. Do you think there's any chance that Gensel doesn't end up somewhere else? Meaning stays in Pittsburgh? Yeah, they, they deal a bunch of other stuff and they decide to extend them. I can't I can't envision that path. Someone asked me the same thing about Noah Hannafin an hour right. ago. Will the Flames just go back to him and try and get a deal done? My head would explode if that were the case. <laughs> I think there's been so much frustration and friction with how this process has been handled with Hannafin. I think Gensel is beyond frustrated that he hasn't even talked extension with the Penguins. Like mm. They have not made one negotiating pitch, let alone an offer. And I think that part has driven him crazy. And understandably so after eight years at the level he's played at. But to me, all that does is signal the ultimate end result here. How about Tyler Toffoli? Any chance he extends in New Jersey? Like we're, we've seen all of the, oh, we might we might keep him. We might not. Like what's going on with Tyler Toffoli, do you think? Um, I still think it's more likely than not that he moves. I think the Devils are really wary of committing significant term to someone of his age. And I do think that there was sort of amid all of what happened today, a pretty significant flurry and or lots of talk about Toffoli. I don't, I don't think 
he's going to end up there, but I do think Colorado was interested. And I think it's fascinating to me that Colorado hasn't traded their 2024 first round pick today's pick that moved was 2025. So Mm -hmm. I would be surprised if Colorado ended up hanging on to this year's pick based on how aggressive they've been and flipping stuff around. And I think it was today was a sort of master class from Mm -hmm. Chris McFarlane in terms of making roster changes, a significant real hockey deal. Um, and also being able to unload that Johansson contract. Like you could make the argument that Johansson alone, they should have had to deal a first round pick to get rid of him. They sent one, but it was to get Sean Walker back too, who in his own right, I think is worth a second. So somewhere in that 30 pick spread between second and first, they were able to essentially move eight million dollars uh ten million dollars in real cash a lot of money um in terms of johansson uh going to philly which i don't know what the end game there is for the flyers you just look at how uh, colorado set up their cap and they still have space you can just see that spot sitting in their forward lineup where they could add a add a winger a gensel or a toffoli type player yeah i mean i i think they're really well positioned and i my big concern Patty about the the abs was that absent Nachushkin, absent Landis Cog, who both of them are seemingly pretty likely to be back in the playoffs. This team looked to be really thin. Nathan McKinnon's having his best season ever, and to me, didn't have the proper support structure. Now you've got a you know 50 to 75 point player i think upside wise in middle stat that you plug in there that could be your second line center for you know the next 8 years and you've swapped out your defense core a little bit i don't think walker is nearly as good as bowen byron when they're at their best but he also doesn't have the concussion history and he doesn't have um you know he's a couple years older but doesn't have significant wear on his tires either so I think it's been a really intriguing day for the uh, for the Avalanche, and you know I'm I'm just fascinated to see Edmonton. They've got powder left. Um, if you want to in Van, you can make something happen. Colorado still first round pick. Um, the the New York Rangers still have their first round pick. Like there was a lot that happened today, and still a lot more to come. Of what's happened today, Frank, and I know the deadline's still two days away. People can find you on the Daily Faceoff trade deadline show, which goes 9, 9 a.m. Pacific, if I'm correct about that. 8 a.m. Pacific. 8 a.m. Pacific. I should know that. They said uh, there would be no math. They said there would be no math. Uh, I'm I'm likely going to make an appearance on that show. Hopefully, the Canucks do uh, stuff wrong on the day. Oh, we'll come on. We'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Canucks don't do anything. We're not calling you. Let's yeah, fair enough. Away. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah, you would not want me talking about other teams. Uh, the question I have for you, Frank, is about other teams. Of the trades that have been made today, who has won the day so far? Ooh. Um, is it Colorado? I would lean toward that right now, yes. I'd have to think about it a bit more, but yeah, they're in a pretty good spot. I think they've significantly improved, and I think they haven't by relative comparison, haven't given up a ton to do it. The one team we haven't mentioned, I think, really too much is Vegas. I mean, what, what do you think Vegas is going to do from here? Well, that's another team I should have added into the mix of teams that have done stuff already. Vegas still has four plus million dollars left, and also another team in the mix that still has their first round pick. So, I mean, I look at them and and I like. I would say almost every team that I just named, if you're sitting there watching the market, you go, wait, Buchnevich, non-rental, and they're going to retain half? Like, they're all going, yes, yes, tell me more. I love it. Frank, uh, people are going to find you on Friday. Going to be a good good trade deadline. I'm still confident. I'm still confident. Even with these trades, it's still going to be a great trade deadline. It's going to be a great trade deadline show over on the Daily Faceoff YouTube channel on a Game Plus TV. We're back on TV. We're back on TV. I don't make the news. I just report it. There you go. There you go. Frank, good stuff as always. Thanks for doing this. See you guys. Canucks Conversation is live Monday through Friday, every weekday at 2 p.m. over on the Canucks Army YouTube channel. Make sure you like, subscribe, and interact in the YouTube live chat every day with us, folks.